Lo, I think we lost your audio. Okay. Hi, Lewis. Um, yes, yeah, so you're going to lose our audio for a little bit because we're starting our streams and records. But we will be back at 9 o'clock when we start. Got it. Thanks. Oh gosh. Somebody will tell me to put my microphone up. <laughs> well, they don't let you shut it off. They might be able to shut it off and back for you, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we are. All right. All will order the Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023, Rice Creek Board of Managers regular meeting being held at the Shoreview City Council Chambers. Roll call. I see that all managers are present. Uh, Mr. Administrator, any change to the agenda? Staff have no changes. Hearing none, a motion to approve the agenda. So I'll, I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, passes. Uh, approval of minutes, March 6, 2023 workshop. Uh, Mr. President, I move to approve the March 6, 2023 workshop minutes. Uh, I'll second, second that. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Uh, March 8, 2023, regular meeting. Mr. President, I move to approve the March 8, 2023, regular meeting minutes. I second it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Who's this on? Patrick, to this consent agenda. Yes, uh, President Bradley, staff have one application for your consideration today. Uh, no changes are requested. Are there any questions of Patrick? 
Madam Mayor, can I have a motion? Uh, Mr. President, I move to approve to the consent agenda, uh, permit number 2022-109, or actually Cap Rock, permit number 22-109. A second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And it passes. Open mic. Anyone here would like to speak about something that is not on our agenda? Anyone on the phone? Do we have anyone on the phone? No. Oh, okay. Well, that brings us then. The Anoka County Ditch 10-22-32 petition. Mr. Administrator. Yes, Board of Managers this morning, Tom Schmidt will be informing you regarding the petition uh, staff received to use uh, the ditch as an outlet for a development project. Thanks, Nick. Mr. President, Board of Managers, you have been petitioned for, as the Drainage Authority for an outlet to hasten to 10-22-32. Excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold. Uh, this is very similar to the petition that you were given in a few months ago for ACD 55 in Lino, where you've added, we're asking to add area that's not currently in the drainage area to the drainage area to accommodate this development. You, the petition was accompanied by the appropriate bond to cover the costs of the proceedings. So the step is to accept the petition and appoint the engineer to review the petition and its uh, effects on the drainage system. The staff is recommending that you consider the resolution that's attached in your packet, passage of that resolution, and accept the petition to appoint the engineer. Uh, Tom, I just want for the public to understand that this is adding additional drainage to branch three. Yes. It's not the other branch that we're also discussing later in our proceedings today. Correct, thank you, Manager Bell. Yes, it's a unrelated to the other yeah. discussion. It's just for, <clears throat> I mean, it's directly to branch three, but ultimately to the outlet of 10232 as a whole. So it's both branch three and the main trunk after it joins. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair? Um, Tom, you said this is similar to one we talked about, or we talked about this one before? No, it's similar to one that you, you adopted, or you accepted a petition in did a farther a, to the west, way, way to the east, and this is or the way to the east. Yeah, okay. it's I didn't mean to conflate the two, it's just as and an this, example. It's a okay, thank you. And this is outside the watershed. No, it's in, it's in the it's in our watershed district, it's, it's just outside of the current this area is outside of the current drainage area for okay. 10 22 32. Okay. So within the watershed, but outside the drainage watershed. Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, um, Manager Wynett, just uh, clarify too, uh, um, a large portion of this project already drains into a no county dish 1022-32. What they're proposing to do is to add area that, um, a portion of their property that currently is going um, to another drainage system, which would be 5362 drainage system, and they want, they for the purposes of their project, need to um, reroute that water into 1022-32. Okay. And Mr. President, uh, Chris, this is only 4.38, uh, uh, correct? It's a small acreage, 4, 4.43 acres, something like that? Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. It's it's yeah. a it's just small. a portion yeah. out of their overall project, yeah. which is much larger. Very small, it's being added. And Chris, to make it very clear to the public that we're not approving this. All we're doing is approving a study of this. Correct. Yes. Correct. You're, you're accepting the petition for filing and then appointing an engineer. Any other questions of Chris? 
Mr. President, I actually do have a question. I don't know if it's the appropriate question, so forgive me. I am on a learning curve here. So I recall when this project initially came to the city of Blaine, and with the proposal of this project came in the EAW, an environmental assessment worksheet, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with because you probably see these all the time, involving multiple layers of government, MPCA, like everything, DNR. Does any changes to the drainage within that project impact any of those study results? Is there any correlation between the two or this this ask is allowed within what's already been established? Is that a fair question? Is that a silly question? No, no, it's not a silly question at all. And I um, don't know what the content of that EAW is. Um, and so I, I think that it's um, going to be important for the petitioner here to make sure that what they are petitioning for is consistent with, with what has been proposed before in the past. Um, from my understanding, what they're petitioning is consistent with a, a permit they've already been cap rocked for through the district. Um, and so, um, again, this is kind of in their process, one of the last steps, which is to um, ensure that they're compliant with the 103E or the public drainage system law uh, in that process. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Again, I apologize no, no, if those no, two no, things no. are unrelated. I was just curious. You should never apologize for asking <laughs> questions. So I, I think further responding to your question is all we're going to do is look to see whether or not adding four something yeah. acres is acceptable to the capacity of the existing drainage. If we were to put conditions on that, such as having to build the holding ponds or whatever, then that might have to be reviewed further, either as our part of our cap rock permitting or otherwise. But at this point, we're simply looking at adding some additional drainage. So with that, can I have a motion? <clears throat> well, well, I can give it a shot if you would like. Um, Mr. President, I'll move resolution 202305 for the findings and order accepting the petition and appointing an engineer with the following orders. The Board of Managers accepts the petition and appoints Houston Engineering Inc. Chris Otternus to investigate the effect of the proposed action under the standards found in section 103E401 and file a report of findings. B, the engineer is directed to include in its investigation and assessment of the capacity of branch three of ACD 102232 to accommodate draining discharges from the additional acres and to evaluate the overall impact of the development proposed stormwater management controls on the portions of public drainage conveyance downstream of the development. C, the engineer is further directed to provide an opinion on outlet charge in light of prior water management district charges within the uh, ACD 1022-32 water management district. Um, D, Upon receipt and review of the engineer's report of findings, the board authorizes its staff to set and notice a public hearing on the petitioned action. The hearing may be held in conjunction with a regular meeting of the board. Uh, finally, E, this order is not an approval of the proposed action, nor does it modify the drainage area or any portion thereof. Subsequent proceedings on the petition will occur consistent with the requirements of statute section 103E-401. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? And then there'll be a roll call. Bradley, yes. Robert, Robertson? Yes. Wagaman? Yes. Muller? Yes. Winant? Yes. Passes. I agree. Okay. Mr. Administrator, next item. Yes. <coughs> Board President, Board of Managers, next on the agenda is Anoka Washington Judicial Ditch uh, 3, Branch 1, 2, and 4. Uh, you're planning a repair project there, and you need to release your bid package. Ashley Ritchie is here to uh, walk the board through that. You'll find the items on page 43 of your packet. Good morning, Board of Managers. Yes, as uh, Administrator Tomshek stated, this is for the Anoka Washington Judicial Ditch 3, branch ones, branches 1, 2, and 4 repair in the cities of Hugo and Lionel Lakes. Um, this is phase two. Phase one um, was completed in 2020-2021. Um, and so as part of the phase two repair, we did an addendum um, in August of last year. 
to add on the plans for phase two. So you guys have already seen the plans. You guys gave the final order approving the repair. Um, and so this is, as the administrative time check said, the bid package. Um, and so just a couple notes that weren't in the memo. Um, we found out a little bit after that um, DNR has provided comments. Um, so these plans and specs, um, well, the plans won't really change too much, um, but we will have <coughs> to coordinate with um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife as well as the, the DNR to do some additional surveys um, for threatened and endangered species. But we'll be working on that coordination and any um, things that come out of that, any precautions or measures that we have to take will be incorporated into the plans and specifications um, it, with the contractor. It may have to be an addendum to the bid once it goes out. Um, but we're still looking forward to getting this project bid out. I believe we're hoping to close bids April 14th and present them to you at the, I might have that timeline mixed up. We'll be presenting um, bids in early April to you guys. Um, with that, uh, uh, we also do have to still develop this SWIFT. Um, with that, I'll take any questions. What on earth did they find that's living in our ditch? <laughs> uh, so they haven't found anything yet. I'm sorry, what did you have? I asked what on earth they found that's living in our ditch. A living or a Yeah, <laughs> so, um, so they, uh, as part of our repair report that we completed in 2018, um, we have a license to uh, view the DNR's nat uh, natural heritage database, which lists um, threat known occurrences of threatened and endangered, endangered species. Mm -hmm. And so we did note that a couple had been identified in the region of the project. Um, for... Um, I'm not entirely sure, but this got kicked up through a little bit different department in the DNR on this time for phase two. Um, and so they came back with several additional plant species um, and birds. Um, and so that we'll have to be, I believe, doing surveys to identify them. Chris. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. President here. Um, just to uh, clarify on this too, uh, so uh, a couple things. The DNR um, did indicate that um, the work that we're doing is not going to require a permit or further permission from the DNR, which is good news. Uh, um, as Ashley indicated, they have been evolving their process in dealing with the state uh, threatened endangered species. Um, so they did provide a um, uh, commentary on what we're doing. Um, I, we're having dialogue back and forth with them. I'm, I don't believe we probably will have to do additional field investigation of those species, but we are going to be needing to coordinate with them regarding timing of when the work is uh, occurring, that sort of thing. Um, one example of a species that's uh, um, in that general neighborhood is uh, blinding's turtles, and we've uh, um, addressed those issues in previous drainage system <coughs> projects. Um, and I anticipate we're going to address them similarly here. But again, the, the, um, between the DNR's modified um, process that they're doing and, um, you know, other concerns, again, like with um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, the um, new ruling regarding the northern long-eared bat, uh, which um, is something that we're still evolving to hear about from um, the, the federal government because they haven't um, uh, still yet to the state provided clarity, clarity on how that's to be administered. Um, those are things that we're still needing to work through. Mr. Chair, in addition to endangered species, are there any pipelines in this area? Underground pipelines? Uh, yes. That have been identified? Yeah. Yes, uh, and we do have those indicated within our project plans. We are We do have one crossing um, of a pipeline that uh, we're going to be um, working through, and we aren't anticipating that that's going to be um, negatively affecting our ability to um, uh, or continue through with the repair. And I bet I could find that on one of these yep. in the small print in one of these. Branch four, I believe. Branch four. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. President, thank you for your question. Uh, I'm just curious, you mentioned, uh, Chris, the long-eared bat. <laughs> I wasn't familiar with that being in the drainage system, but do you mean it's in the uh, area, or, or are you referring it just as an example that there's something else that they, 
we're waiting for that, that's actually been named in the previous study from 2018. Uh so um, the, uh, there is a new ruling by the federal government that where they're changing th that bat from a designation of threatened to endangered, and with that is um, going to be additional, um, I, I guess, uh, criteria and uh, due diligence that's going to be required of um, uh, anybody that's working in an area that um, may potentially um, affect the roosting habitat of those uh, long-eared bat, which um, they've identified on a map right now of this big blob that covers a significant portion of the upper Midwest. Okay. And so um, this is something that people need to be conscious of um, when they're doing any sort of tree clearing activity within the state. Okay, Mr. President. So, um, we have to respect these areas, but I just want to caution that when you begin to uh, proceed with the process and uh, that we keep our uh, investigation to our drainage uh, right away and not uh, if we have to have any consultants here that they're not going uh, on a adventurous trip beyond the area that we are going to be working in. Thank you. Yeah, I think John's referring to some of the rather expensive experiences we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am, Mr. President. Thank you. So any further questions? If not, there is a proposed motion on page 43. Mr. Chair, I move to acknowledge the receipt of the Noka Washington Judicial Ditch 3 Phase <clears throat> 2 Repair Plan and specifications dated February 2023 and authorized district staff and Houston Engineering Inc. to advertise a solicitation of bids for this project. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes. <coughs> Mr. Administrator, County Ditch 10-22-32 consideration of next steps. Yes, board president, board of managers, uh, next on the agenda, Noak County Ditch 10-22-32 and consideration of next steps. Uh, you'll recall that this was on some previous workshops uh, in which it was removed uh, and included some brief discussion. Today, I think the board's in a position uh, based on that workshop discussion to schedule a meeting for a discussion uh, in two things would take place. I would see that as Houston Engineering presenting, sharing its evaluation of alternatives. That was the memo that they completed uh, under your direction and it was the item that was on those past agendas uh, that was uh, removed. Also at that meeting, you would hear any comment from any party that had an interest uh, in the matter of ACD 10.22.32. This would be a public meeting uh, with notice. And to provide notice, and how you've done that in the past, is you've sent the notice postcard to all the folks uh, in the drainage area of the system, uh, including the cities, DNR, and, and our counties, and all, uh, our other partners uh, to provide sufficient notice time in publication in the paper, uh, I would suggest April 26th, which is your regular meeting, uh, and as a part of your regular meeting schedule to hold that. I'll note that uh, City of Columbus representatives are present here. Uh, perhaps they'd have something to share um, or any discussion by the board. And then certainly I think it's important that the board actually have a motion and, and take an action. So there's clear understanding of the board's expectations and directions to staff. Before we call on them, any questions directly to our administrator before we ask the city? So as clarify, we've received comments about our proposed repair report. Uh, we want to acknowledge those. We want to give those uh, people uh, who is 
Sunday Engineering Inc. on behalf of uh, Perry Wagaman, who's proposed a potentially proposed a different ASIC level at the uh, Joe Durrell crossing and changes to what the uh, pipes underneath the road would size and capacity and also possibly other things. We want to hear him, uh, give him an opportunity to explain to us, us ask questions of that person, give our engineer an opportunity to respond if they can at that time. If not, we'll get a response later. Regardless of how we solve that question, it seems, at least to me, that we would be in a position to decide whether or not we want to pr proceed with a repair report. We can determine exactly the level of the ditch underneath Joe Durrell at a subsequent date. The issue is, do we take it, do we want to take it down to that? So at that point, uh, we have the mayor, uh, Mayor Pryor, and we have Janet Heg, Heg, uh, Hagland. Hagland. I got I looking desperately looking, and I, and we welcome you and thank you. Uh, we have been hearing that the city was interested in this, obviously for good reasons, because one of the things we may do is ask you to change the culverts and the depths. And if you have anything you want to tell us it now, or you can wait until our meeting on April 26th, whichever you'd like. Welcome. If you'd state your name. Yes, thank you. This is Janet Hagland. I'm on the City Council for the City of Columbus, and I'm also the Council appointed, uh, excuse me, appointed board liaison to the Rice Creek Watershed District. So I thank you for your comments, and I wanted to assure you that we are very interested in being part of the conversation. This is an area that the city has received numerous complaints about flooding over the years. The last few years, it's really died off because we've had very dry weather. So um, not sure if that's a, a lasting change or not, but um, I think it's great that we can all come together and try to figure out what the best solution uh, to this problem is because if we are looking at a wet spring or a series of wet springs, I have no doubt that we're going to have complaints and problems. Um, and then also as the development in our city happens upstream of this, I'm worried that it's just going to contribute more to the problem. So thank you for including us, and I will. I, I checked my calendar. It looked like the 26th was a fine date for us. So thank you. Any questions? Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, Ms. Janet, uh, do, uh, was the city going to provide a presentation of information on the 26th from their point of view? Uh, you know, you have a lot of experience in the back, and... That's what the purpose of this 26th meeting is, is to gather as much information as possible. I think if if you are desiring of that, we certainly can provide the information that we have. I think we all have a different, uh, what do I want to say, uh, accumulation of data. And I think having a forum like this to put it all on the table and figure out like how it all fits together and and what the best path forward is, is great. I, I don't want you to assume we're coming here with an agenda. We're not. We're coming here to say, let's, I mean, we've heard different things. We, certainly the residents have their impression of what the cause is, and we don't have the information that you have, so I think this is an opportunity to kind of work together on the problem. Uh, Mr. President, uh, well, we don't have your information either necessarily, so that's why I'm asking you to come to the meeting and 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 present uh, a full background history of it that I, I would be I think the board would help the board greatly in making our decision and and I would just say not to contradict you but I'm thinking that somewhere you do have most of our information because we can't do anything with water without your approval so <laughs> pretty sure somewhere in your archives you do have the information but I also recognize that digging through all that's probably not the best use of your time so we'll definitely come forward with what we have I also think that you know the development um, where Joe Drell Street was put in, my understanding, and again, this is way before my time, was that um, the Coon Creek watershed was the watershed of record for that development. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's your board's uh, job or whose job it is to see what we can get from them too, but that would actually be, I think, very helpful. Um, 
So maybe that's a that's a dis, that's a discussion we can have prior to the meeting. So, Mr. President, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I look forward to seeing your side of the uh, conversation that took place between Coon Creek and the city of Columbus at that time, which Rice Creek wasn't uh, involved. And so uh, that uh, would certainly help for us to have a more universal understanding of the situation. I agree. Thank you. Mr. Tomza, you had your hand up. Thank you, uh, President Bradley, Board of Managers. Uh, in your determination of the ASIC on the system, uh, you had two public comment periods. And so to that question, I wanted to be clear that you did direct staff previously to complete public data requests of both the city and Coon Creek. Uh, all that information uh, that was disclosed to Rice Creek uh, was received, reviewed by your engineer, and they produced a memo on, on the materials. But that's not to say that good discussion on it uh, shouldn't take place with the uh, good folks of the city of Columbus. So. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? If not, uh, I would move that we on give public notice as appropriate for public hearings to on April 26 at our regular board meeting. Uh, we can schedule it as our first public component after we've done our usual quick things yep. uh, to address the both the re repair report and recommendations of Houston Engineering. The challenge to that by uh, Mr. Mike Kepler, professional engineer from Sunday Engineering, and looking forward to some pre pre presentation participation by the City of Columbus, as we've discussed, and other public members. So I have a second to that. Mr. President, I'll second that, and uh, I look forward to receiving any information. I realize the staff has been diligent under the Freedom of Information Act, but from my experience in the past, it never hurts to have a second look back there by the, so we find anything that's been overlooked at the time, not that it was uh, uh, just by error, that's all. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm just, I'm going to abstain on this one. Very good. Thank you for that. Thank you, both City of Columbus. Uh, look forward to working with you as always. Thank you again. President Bradley, Board of Managers, the next item on your agenda is action item number four. That is the Peterson uh, Company's pay request uh, number one for the Long Lake uh, Fish Barrier. And we have Matt Koshin here today to share that with you. And the materials are found on page 59 of your packets. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Mr. President, Board of Managers, we, uh, as Nick said, we have a pay application from Peterson Companies for the Long Lake Fish Barrier. Um, uh, realizing now that uh, it's alternately listed as the Johanna Creek Fish Barrier and the Long Lake Fish Barrier is one and the same. Um, the difference is uh, what was on the DNR permit on one piece of paper and, uh, and what the contractor <laughs> called it. <coughs> same barrier. Um, don't have a big presentation, but did just have a couple of photos to share of the barrier and the construction. Um, just a couple of reminders. This is a continued implementation of the Rice Creek's uh, common carp management plan for the Long Lake and Lionel Chain of Lakes system. Uh, the construction of this barrier was funded primarily by a state grant, uh, the Targeted Watershed Grant Program. That's uh, funding 90% um, of this project. Uh, we received two quotes for construction. Peterson Companies was the low quote. Uh, they started construction in um, was that early February. Construction was essentially done on March 6th. Um, I'll note that Peterson had to work through some pretty nasty weather to get this work done, including mm -hmm. that really big snowstorm. Um, I think that was on a Wednesday and Thursday in February. Uh, 
I'll note that we've reviewed the pay application uh, and noted that Peterson Companies is withholding 5% uh, retainage on what they are what they put in their pay application, in addition to about $3,300 for site restoration. So here's where I'll show you some of the photos and uh, talk about that briefly here. Uh, here's here's the site. This is just outside uh, the New Brighton Service Center in New Brighton or New Brighton Community Center, I think, as it's called now. Uh, I'll note that uh, if, the, if any of the board members are going to be attending the um, city county partner meeting in April, uh, it will include a tour of this uh, because the city county partner meeting is going to be held at the New Brighton Community Center and this is right outside of it. Uh, so this is prior to construction during site preparation. Um, here's uh, approximately where the barrier is constructed. Here's a photo of it right after construction. Um, you can see it's uh, set well down into the stream channel there. Uh, if we get a bit closer, we can see that the uh, wings or the edges of the barrier are uh, vinyl sheet pile, and then the frame is made out of welded aluminum. Those are bolted together, uh, and there's um, basically like an aluminum skirt that covers any of the gaps that would be in the barrier. You'll note it doesn't look like a barrier much in this photo right here. Uh, I'll show you uh, another site where we constructed a barrier just like this. The, the screens are fabricated separately. Um, I think the last time I was in front of the board, we were uh, considering costs for the fabrication of these screens. They are since done, and they're going to be installed uh, later this week or early next week. Yeah. Uh, when they are installed, then they're locked in place with these pin locks that you can kind of see going through the structure here. So they can't be removed uh, except by district personnel, but they are removable. Um, that's really all I had. Just wanted to share a couple photos with you, uh, but note again that there is a 5% retainage, uh, and we do have some money for site restoration. I think in one of these photos here, here we go, we can see some uh, temporary erosion control. Of course, ground is still frozen, snow covered. Once things thaw out, we'll get some more permanent erosion control measures and uh, site restoration like grass seeding, things like that. Uh, that's all I had, but happy to answer any questions the board would have. Any questions, Matt? Mr. President, uh, Matt, uh, do those screens have to be cleaned periodically because of uh, sediment that comes in there? <clears throat> yep, uh, President Bradley, Manager Waller, uh, because of sediment, no. Um, the, let's see, I'll go back to the photo here. Historically, um, fish, um, physical fish barriers like this do have issues with accumulating debris and holding back water. Um, at this particular site that we can see in the photo, before we replaced it with this design, uh, there were horizontal uh, square bars. Those were very good at trapping and holding debris, and we had to clean it regularly to keep water flowing through it. This new design, we have rounded horizontal bars, and we found that they're much better at passing debris. And so, uh, while we do have to check and clean them periodically, it's far less than we have in the past, this new design. Thank you. Any other questions? So, Mr. Chair? <clears throat> Um, it's great to see this from an idea of the fish that decided to go a different direction than uh, <laughs> we had first anticipated to the final completion here. Does this, and I'm searching for what we'd call this, but does this end up being a district facility? It does indeed. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've now added another district facility to our list. President. Bradley, uh, Manager Wine, that is correct. Uh, in the activity that Matt's pointing to, these are regularly uh, inspected or reviewed, certainly to ensure that the flow is happening and the debris removed. So this is part of your ongoing facilities program. Okay, yeah. well, in addition to this, I did attend the CARP workshop last Thursday that Matt did a great presentation. Um, I know much more than I probably should about <laughs> CARP, not only environmentally, but the whole economics of it. So will this be an area where fish will be removed from the stream at a certain point? And how, how are we gonna do that? Uh, yes, Manager Winant, our, our contract with CARP Solutions this year includes uh, some work to remove, I wanna make sure it's the right barrier here, at this barrier. Uh, does include some time to remove accumulated carp on the downstream side of this barrier. So the uh, carp solutions has done that in other areas that can be done basically 
carp are accumulated on the downstream or aggregated on the downstream side of the barrier. Carp solutions can come in and put a net a little further downstream so they're trapped in a single area. Uh, and then they can use backpack electrofishing gear to stun the fish and remove them from the creek. That's generally thought of as um, an efficient or economical way to remove carp when there is a, a somewhat substantial population here. We have documented that in the past couple of years. And so we think removals at this site uh, will likely occur, well, it will occur this year, likely will occur for maybe another year or two before it uh, ends up not being an economical or efficient method anymore, then we won't do it. Of course, the primary purpose of this barrier is to prevent the carp from accessing uh, spawning wetlands just upstream of this yep. area. Removals are a bit ancillary to that. So I have a lot more fascinating facts that I could uh, <laughs> leave those well, for I, my... Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that Carp Solutions would be glad to have a volunteer help them remove those carp. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll have a few more comments during my update. Nick, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, President Bradley, board managers, mm -hmm. uh, echoing Matt's note of the city county partner meeting and this being uh, part of that presentation and sharing with our partners. Also note, uh, Kendra Sommerfeld, your communication and outreach uh, staff person is investigating other options because it is such a public location. Uh, currently there's consideration of some signage, interpretive signage that may help with that. We have a CAC member that will be participating in a farmer's market that occurs in the adjacent parking lot. So we might uh, have a, a table and, and present some of this good work. Um, Kendra herself will be participating in that and we're looking at articles that we'll submit to the state. Uh, uh, one, because it's part of the, the funding uh, that we received, but uh, also good news. And then we'll look to put that locally in newsletters, et cetera, as, as uh, our partners would like. So we'll put it on our website as well, but I wanted to share that from Kendra. Great. Thank you. Any further questions on that? So, Mr. Chair, I, I would move to approve the partial payment to Peterson Companies for the Johanna Creek slash Long Lake Fish Barrier Project in the amount of $33,012.50. Second. Second. Any discussion? And then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Always in, always entertaining when you come. Yeah. Uh, check register, I believe, is next. Mr. Chair, I would move the approval of the sec check register in the amount of $216,418.18. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? In favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes. 5 0. Uh, President Bradley, <clears throat> next item on the agenda is consideration of our discussion and informational items. We do have staff reports uh, within the packet. Anyone have any questions or comments about staff reports? They're always fascinating. You have a busy, busy staff. Yes, we do. No question. I'll happy to share that back with them, uh, <laughs> Board of Managers. Uh, <coughs> I, a couple of comments as I flip through these. I, I'm glad to see members are, or staff are doing their own outreach to other organizations. I see, Patrick, you presented to the mm -hmm. Kiwanis. So that's fabulous. And Ashley, you're doing a lot of IT work these days, <laughs> including we have to change our password. Okay, got that. So far, they haven't asked for that. Yeah. Yeah. President Bradley, Board of Managers, the next item is consideration of the April calendar. It's on page 107. That is correct. We've added to the agenda of April 26, but we already have that on our agenda, so that doesn't require a change. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? 
Uh, the county partners meeting is on the 12th. Correct. Yep. Uh, again, uh, board of managers that is in person at the New Brighton Community Center. The address is on the calendar. Mm -hmm. So for the benefit of our visitors from the city of Columbus, twice a year we meet with all of our partners, all of the cities, all of our counties, have a great dialogue opportunity. They like to hear, particularly when we, our grant programs <laughs> and, and when those might become available and what those have been used for in the past and other items of concern, any regulation changes or otherwise that we're considering. Uh, so they get advanced notice to, to work with us. So it's an important thing that we've been doing for several years now. And, uh, we like to think of ourselves working in conjunction with our, all of our partners, our cities and our, and our counties. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, and Mr. Manager Robinson, this will be the first time I've been to one live and in person because the last three years that I've been on the <clears throat> on the board this has been all remote because of COVID sure. so I'm looking forward <clears throat> to seeing who our city partners are. <laughs> It'd be nice to be back in the room. Yes. 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 So next item is President Bradley board of managers next is administrator updates. Uh, I'll just share with you a couple of things. Um, one, the, the cubicle update at the office uh, investigation is proceeding. Um, we're looking at a contract for the new cubes for additional staff uh, space. That'll be uh, four, hopefully to be installed in the near future. It's coming in uh, consistent with our budgeting. Um, Manager Bradley and I uh, worked to meet with uh, Senator John Marty. Uh, we did have a meeting with his legislative assistant uh, regarding the I-35 flood mitigation project. Uh, you'll know it as Ramsey County Ditch 235. Uh, well, I'll note, I would say it was good to make that contact again. Um, funding for the project in the current year seems that it may be fading, but we'll keep up the, the effort. And there's been some legislation that was proposed uh, House file 2354, and it's regarding a establishment of a drainage registry information portal. Um, and in keeping with the board's support of Minnesota Watersheds, MOD, um, and support for the drainage work group, uh, we've be sending some letters there to raise that concern that the issue should come back to that group for further discussion. I don't have anything else. All right, Mr. President, um, is that just a house bill? Or is that uh, that drainage bill uh, in the Senate with a companion bill? It's a house, it's, it's, it's well, it's, it, yeah, I think it's, we've been asked to write a letter as we yeah. have drafted. Yeah, I just, I'm just asking if there was, just, the just like, this is the way it was last year, last I time is so. just in the house, okay, thank you. And, and uh, I'll note that uh, Kendra and, and Nick and I joined forces to draft a brilliant letter, much better <laughs> than the one proposed by Metro Maud, uh, or by Maud, yep. to, to clearly state our concern with regard to it. So I think it's a good letter. Yep. And Mr. President, was it, it mentioned at uh, Senator Marty's meeting, or did you did you just meet with his with his uh, so with him personally? So it's pretty no. Okay. So it's okay. pretty pretty clear that. And All right. This is not, we're too no, deep, deep into the session. Enough said, enough yeah. said, I understand. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, just carrying on with that, as a result of that, it, they did suggest we contact some of the connection. Uh, we have done that, and they had several calls to this office, and yesterday I sent an email saying, if it's not this year, how about we see you this summer sometime, when would that work for you? So we're, we're already trying to work towards next year. Very good, sir. Very good, sir. Um, John, do you have anything you want to update? I have no confession. Yeah. That's unusual. Right. You might want it. Yes. So <clears throat> correct me, please, Matt, if I don't have this straight. But I think the most fascinating piece I came out of from this meeting was you have commercial fishermen, which are limited, 
like there might be six to eight teams in the state. They're divided into regions. They get their permits and they go out and sand fish. And at this time of year, they're looking for 25 pound carp, which somehow they gather throughout the state and put in a huge tank, they're live, and drive them to New York City where they are sold <coughs> in some form or fashion for Passover. Really? And I was just blown away. I mean, they're talking about thousands of pounds of carp. The other interesting piece is that if you're a commercial fisherman, of course, you want to keep fishing. So you want to be careful about how many fish you take out of the lake because you want to come back next year and get some more fish as opposed to some of us. And I want to get those get them out of there. fish out of there. Mm -hmm. So uh, an, another example about the complexity of any actions that occur both economically, socially, politically, you know, environmentally. So it was, it was fascinating. And I'm particularly, I mean, I, not only the work that Rice Creek does, but on the Clean Water Council, we know that state, statewide, sometimes if you have done enough land use changes that you're not getting um, nutrients into the lake to cause uh, in the algae blooms, at least this is the internal stirring up of the, um, that the carp does to, you know, cause the turbidity and all the challenges. The other thing is that you have a choice if you're a lake owner. If you have all the, the algae bloom and the greening of the water, you can still water ski because you don't have the vegetative growth underneath to deal with. But if you get rid of it all, the water might, there might be water clarity, but those weeds that you swim through or natural plants or curly leaf, whatever. So uh, again, the, the social discussion about the many mm -hmm. lake owners, you probably know this uh, very that. intimately. Yeah. Um, George might want to ski, but someone else wants the clear water and it goes mm -hmm. step by step. So we have a good job. We have a good job. Mm -hmm. I, I live on Bald Eagle where we've had very successful with our alum treatments and numerous other projects. And it is, we have issues between, would I be able to sell my house on this lake because it smells so bad and looks so bad in August versus, oh, it affects my sailing. So yeah, I, <laughs> I, I'm a sailor, I'm a sailing, I'd rather have it stinky. No, thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> Steve? I have nothing today. I don't believe I have anything. Hey, and, and, and Nick stole all my thunder about how I've signed letters, so. Uh, motion to adjourn? Wow. Move to adjourn. All second. In favor say aye. 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 I see Lewis. Lewis, hi. Goodbye, Lewis. Aye. Lewis. <laughs>